So in preparation for harvest, we wanted to do a quick video series just walking around this HD35F Draper. Uh, some tips and tricks and things to watch going into harvest and some options to help you maximize the performance of this head as we get into harvest here. So one of the first things looking at this head, we've got our, our feed drum here, but just remember that the tines on this are adjustable. They're, they're on a cam with how engaged they are and when they engage with that crop. Uh, so if you're in the real long green ropey stuff, you may want those fingers extended and doing more to drag and push that crop into the feeder house. On the other side, when things are really dry, uh, easy feeding, and maybe if you're seeing any um, anything getting pulled back around especially, that's where you wanna pull those fingers back out, make them a little bit more gentle. We want that crop feeding in nice and smoothly without any wrap around this drum. So. Uh, if you're in doubt, setting it at that middle position is not a bad starting point, but you can optimize a little bit by making that adjustment. Another thing I see a lot of guys putting on their heads, not just the HDFs, but even Hydroflex drapers, is this what we call the shark fin. This is orderable through parts, and uh, you can put it on a lot of different models and sizes of heads. But what that does, especially if you're coming into point rows or half head, uh, things like that, um, it'll keep, with fast draper speeds, it'll keep that crop from shooting over to the other side and possibly plugging up your draper belt. So it's just a stop. It helps stop that crop from each side and redirect it, get it pointing into the combine where it belongs. Another thing to think about during harvest is our knife options. Again, this is independent of an HDF, RDF, or even a Hydroflex draper head, but uh, think about what style knife you have and what might benefit your operation. What we've got here is what we call the short, long configuration. So every other knife is longer and every other knife is short. And we've seen a lot of no-till guys like that. Uh, just because if you're getting corn stalks from last year's crop coming into this head, it'll let those get deeper into that cutter bar before they get cut. Um, and yeah, just, just see better performance and less buildup or plugging or dragging from that sickle that way. Uh, you can also run just the long, long where it's the same knife all the way across. And that does fine if you're not in no-till. Um, some guys have different preferences there, but there are those two options. Now this is the coarse tooth knife. We also have a fine tooth knife option. That's better utilized in our small grain crops, our small stem crops like uh, wheat, not so much soybeans. Soybeans, I really prefer this uh, coarse knife here. As far as adjustments, just make sure that, that these hold downs and the guards are set correctly. Um, you don't want very, you don't want play up and down, and you also don't want these hold downs pressing where they're building up a heat spot. That's gonna cause premature knife wear or possibly knife failure if these aren't set up right. So usually about a credit card width or less on these hold downs is a good rule of thumb. But go through that, make sure this knife can run easily pre-harvest. And it could be just as easy as hooking everything up, letting it run for about 15 minutes and, and looking for any hot spots before harvest even starts. So inside the side panel of this HDF 35, of course you've got your spare knife within the frame. So if you do need a full knife replacement, it's right there accessible to you. Now, this part may look a little bit different depending on which model year we're talking about. This is a model year 2025. So this has got the hydraulic cylinder for actuating our cutter bar. Uh, if you've got an, a couple model years older, you may have the mechanical turnbuckle here. And if you put the head on the ground, that's usually the easiest with that turnbuckle. Um, you can pretty much turn it by hand to release that cutter bar and put it into flex mode. Do each side. Um, or with this one, it's a hydraulic cylinder, so it's just a cab actuation here. But either way, it puts that knife into flex mode so you get the benefit of the wing flex and the cutter bar making the fine tune adjustments to really shave the ground in every part of your field. Now, if you are running into situations where maybe you're seeing some, some pushing uh, in one spot or another along the head, there are fine tune adjustments in the cab to adjust your individual wing pressure on the left or the right separately, or the total float of that frame. An alternative I've seen, if that's not enough, you can take a little bit of travel out of your knife and it, it puts a little bit 
takes a little weight off the cutter bar, puts it back into the frame where the hydraulic system can control that. So especially if you've got a turnbuckle, I like that and it's something to try this harvest. Uh, instead of going all the way out for full flex, try just that half flex mode uh, where it's right in the middle and, and see what that does when it relieves a little bit of the weight off that cutter bar. Going forward, of course, we've got the mechanically driven knife. So we're going to have lots of power, lots of torque. Even if we need to cut uh, perpendicular to the rows of soybeans, it'll have plenty of power to do that well. So another option on these HDF heads is with these end dividers. Now this short point here, it will illuminate. So at night, you'll see that yellow glow and you'll be able to easily find the ends of the head um, at all times. Now some guys like this and are happy with this, but there's also the option this is just on the back frame of your head and you can throw this on as an alternative, but this long rod divider can help split some of those taller soybeans early and start that breaking those up before they get too far into the header. Um, really it's kind of a preference thing, uh, different fields, different conditions, even different varieties sometimes uh, may handle a little bit differently, but both options are readily available on these HDF heads for whatever you want to use. So for your side belt tension, very simple to adjust. You've got your indicator back here. You want that indicator showing in the green to run for field conditions. Uh, in the off season, it might not be a bad idea to loosen those off or leave some pressure on the belt, but for sure, uh, new header, if you're seeing any stretch, anything like that, quick and easy in your morning walk around to make sure that's still showing in the green left and right side of the header. So this indicator, this valve block is important on these HDF headers because remember, this is a, a four piece head really. You've got your adapter, you've got your center frame and you've got one wing on each side. So for your wings, uh, whether it's this like a 2025 model, older models may have a red button as well as a service handle. Um, either way, just remember there's, there's three modes and the decal says it well here. If we're running over here, uh, that's full flex mode. So that would be for when the combine's hooked up, letting the combine actuate that and move those wings as it wants to. Uh, the other side, if we're pointed the other direction, would be if we're putting this head on a trailer. And that's let, that lets the whole head relax. With temperature changes, going down the road, bouncing and bumping, we don't want those wings slowly pulling up. So putting it all the way over here lets that head relax or in the middle or straight up on this indicator would be for a service mode. And that just locks everything out so that uh, the, the wings cannot move. If it's an older head, you'll have a push button and the push button will put you between the combine mode or the relaxed mode for trailering. The red handle is only to be used for servicing. So if a technician's working on it, you want to lock that hydraulic system out completely. That'd be like running it straight up. For the most part, leave that red handle alone if you're seeing that on your head and just use the red button. Uh, and that is pushed in for running on the combine and then you twist and pull that button out when you have the head on a trailer. Now, a lot of these HDF heads are ordered just like we see here with just this empty bracket. This bracket would be for a gauge wheel if we wanted it on these heads. Just one thing to remember, you know, most guys just doing soybeans with these heads, so it's perfectly fine to order this without, let it run on the ground. It'll do everything it should. If we need to cut off the ground for any reason, if we're doing any small grains, wheat or anything else, uh, we need to have the gauge wheels for the head to properly sense the ground as well as flex and adapt to the terrain. So there is a kit, you can put the gauge wheels on this head. Just remember you must do that to have a, to successfully cut any wheat or off ground crops. So this button here is gonna dictate our feed drum speed. There is a high and a low. You can just push it all the way in for our high speed or pull it all the way out for our low speed. Uh, typically your crops and conditions are gonna dictate this. Um, maybe always start on the slow side and if you need really high ground speeds, uh, need to push a lot of material quickly, that's where you can think about going to the high. But that adjustment is right here to make sure crops feeding into the feeder house as quickly as we want it to. The reels on the HD headers, whether it's an HDF or an HDR, um, are all a two section reel like we've had in the past on our uh, FD and, and RD heads. 
However, the one difference is it, it is a master slave system, just like what we've had on the other ones. But if these reels come out of sync, so if the center is raising before the wings, it does have a quick adjustment you can do to get them back into phase. Simply open these two valves back here, climb in the cab, run the reel through a couple cycles. When you activate the reel, the outside wings will come up first, the center will follow. When you let it down, the center will come down first, the outer wings will follow. What that does is it gets any of the air out, plus kind of gets all the hydraulics in phase on the cylinders so they act, so they work together when they're, when they're raising and lowering. After you, this is complete, climb out of the cab, come back down here, close these valves back up and resume normal operation.